is currently September 13th, 2023, as I'm filming. And yesterday, um, I killed my cat. Since 2020, I have said goodbye to seven of my personal animals and one a, like family dog who's been around since we were kids. Uh, so yeah, it's been rough. So this is going to be pretty weird. I am filming this on my phone and there's no telling what the quality is going to be like. I'm, I'm experimenting y'all. For some reason I wanted to make this video and as the title suggests, well no not really, the title tells you what's going on. I don't know. Um, if you're curious, I plan to name all of my videos by the way of classic Fall Out Boy songs, so you're welcome. <laughs> Except it'll actually be relevant to what's going on in the video. It's just gonna be a sentence. That's what I mean. So, oh shit, I left it over there. I'll be back. Hold on. Hold on. This is Hopper, by the way, one of my two dogs. Um, he is not the one who chewed up my pillowcase, but as you can see, I've got quite a few. I've got a bit, speaking of Fall Out Boy, this is from a Fall Out Boy shirt that I got on eBay. But anyways, I'm like patching this hole. I don't really know what I'm doing, to be quite honest with you. Like, I know some basic stitches, but I don't own a sewing machine. And I'm, again, I'm... I didn't like, one of the things I don't like is when someone's like, oh my god, it's so easy, just use things you have at home, like extra fabric and pins to keep the fabric in place. I don't have either of those things. Why would I have those things? I do not sew. So what I do have is scraps from shirts that I've cut up before, which is technically fabric. And um, I can just sew one stitch once around to hold the fabric in place and then go over it and do like proper stitching that'll hold up. Side rant. This is not what we're here to talk about today. <laughs> but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna put my thread together. I'm gonna thread my needle, you know, you know, technical things. You guys wouldn't get it unless you're just like crafty and cottage core like me. It's the vibe I always go for. That's why I <laughs> that's why I'm doing this all natural. I'm in my pajamas. I left my headband on after I washed my face. I'm filming on my phone, a Moto G Power. This is not an iPhone, can you tell? So yeah, I don't know what the sound quality is gonna be like either. And I'm talking a little bit low because my roommate was up and in the living room not too long ago. And if you hear weird noises in the background, it is one of the many animals that I have in my room right now. There are two dogs and a ferret. The ferret's over there munching on her dinner, so. Apologies in advance. I think I said that already. Um, tutorial. Ugh. That is what we in the biz like to call a needle. I don't know if like, that was very professional by the way as well. I don't know if there's any other way to thread a needle besides looping it through and then just tying the end and bringing the needle down to like the bottom. But that's how I was taught to do it. Anyways, so the whole point of this video is that it is currently September 13th, 2023, as I'm filming. And yesterday, um, I killed my cat. He had to be euthanized because he was 15 years old and um, over the last like three-ish weeks, this cat looked exactly the same from the time he was two to the, to the time he was 15, like up to three weeks ago, seriously, exactly the same. Um, and then three weeks ago, he stopped eating, very unlike him. 
he was a hefty guy, loved his food, used to trick my roommates into feeding him more. Uh, and he lost weight really quickly. And given his age and everything, I took him to the vet when I noticed the issue. And um, they did some blood work. We got some fluids in him. Ooh. We, sorry, I thought it stopped recording. They did some blood work. We got some fluids in him. Preemptively, they gave him some antibiotics um, and serenia so that no matter what the results were, we could hopefully be working on something. And yeah, it turns out he had had an infection. He started eating that same night. The antibiotics and everything seemed to be doing well. Well, cut to um, this current week and suddenly he's not eating again. And one thing about me is I have dealt with an unfortunate number of animal deaths. Um, I have not only worked with animals for most of my adult life, but I have also been raised with tons of animals in the home. My childhood dog died in my arms in my room. Like, yeah, and uh, a little while back, I had a side job as a receptionist at an emergency animal hospital, which is not my first time in an animal hospital, but it was my first time specifically in emergency. And then I decided, actually, I like being able to sleep at night. So this isn't for me anymore. Anyways, so point is, I have a pretty good sense of when it's the end. And it just honestly, like given his condition and everything and him as an individual, it wasn't worth going back and forth to the vet, leaving him there to be hospitalized and poked and prodded and taken images of and going through all of this, um, knowing that it was probably cancer. After getting the blood work results back, I knew that the infection was something that was secondary and because he lost weight everywhere but his stomach and the way that he was acting with food, there seemed to be a mass there, uh, which was probably cancerous. Just given everything else and given my experience with those things. So I woke up Monday morning, it's Wednesday now. And even though it had kind of been in the back of my mind, I woke up and I just was like, time to do it. It's gotta be done over the next couple of days because the alternative is him starving to death. Um, he would have been dead already if I hadn't interfered, honestly. And that's something people don't talk about enough, especially in veterinary. And in, I'm going to take a detour to talk about my time in veterinary. People are not grateful. I don't know where this myth came from that everyone is by default alive and that the job of a doctor, including a veterinarian, is to keep it that way. But besties know it's the opposite. Without them, you're 100% dead. <laughs> nine times out of ten their job is to interfere and try and stop what is the default what is natural which is for you to fucking die sorry i don't know i might bleep that out i'm not sure if i want to be like family friendly on here anyways wow the point of this is that my cat i ended up deciding that instead of taking him into the vet and having them try and get me to run all these other tests do imaging what i knew the next steps would be um, only for them to probably suggest putting him down because the last few times I've had to put down an old animal, that's the route that it's always taken. I realized, I woke up, oh my god, circling back, I woke up, it was at the top of my mind, I was really stressed. My puppy had chewed through this pillowcase, which I'm still not even focusing on sewing because I'm talking. <sighs> I was stressed. I decided to go for a run. Do I look like somebody who, you can't see all of me, but I'm not a runner. I am not fast, but that doesn't stop me. I still, I go, you know what I mean? And I hadn't run in a while. I've been going to the gym here and there, but I was like, I need to be outside. I need to be moving and I need to be outside. And I went on a run and it was a good run. And during the run, I really cleared my head. And I was like, wow. This whole concept I've been trying to learn as an adult in my late 20s of taking care of yourself and giving yourself time to think things over when you're stressed 
actually makes you make better decisions and makes you a better person for everyone around you. Gasp, I never would have guessed anyways. Took a run and then it hit me and I was like, oh, where I live now has a lot more options than where I used to live. And I bet that they have at home euthanasia services for animals and they do. And I called them, they were so nice and they made a next day appointment, which was yesterday, Tuesday. And my mom came over, my boyfriend came over, my roommate stayed here, they were all with me and him. The doctor who came over was super nice. She walked me through every step of the process. At no point did I say like, hey, I've been through this a bunch of times before, even like behind the scenes. Cause I was just, you know, letting her do her thing. There was no need to be a, a jerk about that and also I kind of wanted to see like how can I tell people and give an honest review for your service if I have you treating me differently than you treat someone else does that make sense anyways that's where my head was at I was really sad on Monday because it sucks I had this cat since I was 14 he's moved with me seven eight or nine or ten times um went to college with me crossed state lines with me He's the last of my original crew, if that makes sense, which is weird to say. Uh, but like my last connection to all of the animals I've lost over the last few years. Um, since 2020, I have said goodbye to seven of my personal animals and one a, like family dog who's been around since we were kids. Uh, so yeah, it's been rough. And even though I'm not really a cat person, that was my cat, if that makes sense. But in a way, going through those losses prepared me for this. So I had them as a reference for how I wanted it to go this time. So my last three senior dogs had to be euthanized at an animal hospital, either because that's just what was available to me at the time or I couldn't afford anything else. And I don't regret euthanizing them when I did. However, there were a couple I could have euthanized a little bit earlier before they were. Oh, here we go. Awesome. So I'm really relieved that I had this at home experience and it's weird it's weird to say that the euthanization of my cat went great, but he was dying. He was already going to die. He would have already died if I hadn't interfered and tried to help him. And I'm glad I interfered and tried to do what I could do. But once it got to the point where it was like, the only options are bad ones, which one is the best one? I was really happy with how it went down. At home euthanization, he died in my lap. And um, all the animals who I have euthanized, I've been right there for it every time. That part hasn't scared me. I've been right there for it for strangers animals. Um, I just personally am someone who can't imagine leaving your pet somewhere to die alone. So this is something that really worked for me. Um, I don't have any squeamishness about death or dead body. I have so much experience with euthanasias that like it wasn't shocking to me when she pulled out like the puppy pads um, to catch anything that might leak. Not getting too graphic but like death isn't pretty. <laughs> it's not neat. It's messy and kind of weird and a little bit disturbing and kind of gross most of the time. But it's also so natural. So again I had I had Monday to be sad about it and like come to terms with the decision. And then honestly, I felt pretty good about it. Um, so it was interesting. My mom was crying. My boyfriend was crying. They're both water signs. And I was just kind of chatting with the, uh, with the vet. And at one point I was like, I hope you have a good therapist, honestly. Like you do great work. This is a great service that you provide. But I hope that you talk to someone. And she said, fair. <laughs> So for what it was, it was a very good experience. And I will say too, 
kind of circling back about how I'm not squeamish. Humor is also a coping mechanism. It kind of has to be, right? I've got a lot of family that's first responders and that's kind of just like the way. And um, after the vet had left and my mom had left and my boyfriend was doing something, it was just me and my roommate. And I was like trying to figure out what to do with the body because he was, you know, limp, dead weight. And I was trying to like, humor is also a coping mechanism. We had shown him to the dogs because that's another thing I've always found weird. Like you take an animal away and then they just never come back. That to me, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. So we had shown him to the dogs. Animals are usually pretty good with death. They're like, sniff, sniff, oh, he's dead. And then they go about their business. We just need that closure, right? So that had happened. And I'm trying to like gather him up so we can take him to the crematorium because fun fact, pro tip from me to you, the same crematorium that your veterinarian works with, you can just call them and bring the body there and pick up the ashes on your own time. And it's usually a lot cheaper. It went from $200 doing it through um, the company that did the euthanasia to 80 bucks if I did it myself. No shade to them whatsoever because transport is crazy, but if your crematorium is close to you, and you don't need like a fancy package. I don't keep the urns. I never do. I just want the ashes so I can spread them. It's way easier than digging a hole, especially in the South where it's just clay. Trust me. Um, yeah, do it that way. Cheaper, easier all around. Anyways, what I was saying, he was dead. So I just had him in my arms and my roommate was there and I was trying to like wrap him up so I could like transport him in a somewhat dignified manner. And um, I set him down on the couch so I could go get a box. And she said something about like, yeah, he's not going anywhere. And I was like, don't move. We thought that was pretty funny. I don't know if everyone would have appreciated it in the moment, but we thought it was pretty funny. Anyways, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, it's rough, right? When I lost my dog who so I got my dog when I was 13, she was a puppy, and then I got this cat when I was 14, he was a kitten. And when I lost my dog, it was like losing a piece of my identity. Don't know how else to explain it. If you haven't had an animal or like can't relate to this, whatever, it's not for you. But for me, for example, weed doesn't like me at all. And when I got so high once on accident wasn't intentional that i couldn't even remember my own mom or like what a mom was like why it was important barely even knew my own name i remembered my dog was at home i remembered that dog was at home and i needed to be okay and make it through so i could get back to her and then later i got too high on accident again played myself really I was like oh it's been a lot of years maybe I'll be fine I was not fine and now I don't smoke anymore but anyways and it was legal this time anyways got super high and my current dogs were the only thing that could sober me up for a few seconds at a time I was with my boyfriend I was fine this time sorry that's the ferret I was fine, I was in a safe space, but internally I was freaking out. And the only thing that could make me snap back to reality was my dog grabbing something he wasn't supposed to have. <laughs> and suddenly I was in total control of all of my facilities. I was perfectly rational, rational? I was perfectly rational, reasonable, all my reflexes intact for that alone. So if you can't relate to that, I don't know what to tell you, but when I lost my first dog, it was weird because I was like, everyone who meets me after this point won't really know who I am because they won't have known me with this dog. That is how integral that dog was to my identity as a person. And um, fast forward a few more deaths and the death of this cat 
who was my number two, really, the second one, she raised that cat, I was able to cope with it a lot better and a lot easier. And not only because I did it on my own terms, knowing what I know now and having gone through all those losses and making the decision that I knew I would not regret. Really, the main thing is I'm older. But that's it. I'm on the other side of it. And something that's super weird that I've been having to learn how to do just in the last couple of years is give myself time. That's it. That's the secret to like everything. You wonder how people are well adjusted. You wonder how people are calm and patient and able to do the things they want to do. Time. Revolutionary. Wild. <laughs> But yeah, I'm just older now. I've been through it already. And I lived. I survived. I'm on the other side. And guess what? Things got better. Which is a weird concept to say after you've like lost someone or something that's so integral to you as a person. To be like, oh, I'm okay. I'm very different. But that's actually a good thing. And I'm not one of those people who's like, you had to go through the worst things that have ever happened to you because all the horrible things that happened to the people around you and to your younger self were for the best. No, I do not subscribe to that belief. But what I do subscribe to is if you do make it to the other side of something really terrible, use it. Why not? It's yours. Do with it what you want to do. And if what you want to do is grow, give yourself time to do that. You've already made it. You're already here, right? You're on the other side. So now you just have to kind of like see what happens. I don't know. That's how I feel about it anyways. And as far as pet euthanasia because we've got to wrap this up <laughs> i think it is a mercy and um oh i think i got distracted but at one point what i was gonna say is i swing back and forth even knowing what i knew that it was the end and that it was up to me to decide how we went about that end i held my cat the day before he had his appointment and i said would you hate me if you knew I was going to kill you tomorrow? And then I realized how stupid that was to say, like how just non-productive, because we'll never know. I couldn't tell him and he couldn't tell me, but I do remember thinking when it was happening the next day when he was being euthanized, like, just trust me. The things that I have seen animals go through and I wished they could have been put out of their misery but it wasn't my call or by the time we had to make that call they had already suffered so much I was like just trust me we have all the information it's the end you're gonna go anyways trust me this is better and um I think if you can say that it's not the wrong choice I, you know, obviously I wish we could have that discussion, but that's the way that it is. And I made the best call that I knew to make with what I had at that moment in time. And I don't regret it. So yeah, it's interesting how you just like have to do this little dance between feeling really guilty and also like getting validation wherever you can. Everyone who was around me and supported me that day validated me. It was a really good group. That's the other thing. Reach out and ask for help. Have a support system. Even if you feel like you've got it, because I was kind of like, ah, I've been there, done that. It still helps to have people around you who love you and care about you and understand what you're going through and who validate your choices. And, um, don't make you feel any worse than you might already feel about yourself at the end of the day. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what the goal is. It just popped into my head 
like the night before it was gonna happen it popped into my head like let me just make this video of me attempting to sew this patch on this pillowcase i mean i got around with like the first layer right so it's held in place and now i need to go back in and like reinforce it but like let me make a video of me sewing this pillowcase that my puppy chewed up while talking about pet loss because i'm about to put my cat down and now i've put my cat down and i'm like my boyfriend isn't here to distract me my roommate's gone to bed time to go i don't know i don't know but i wanted to so i did and y'all can't criticize me because i'm grieving and this is how i process my grief i don't want to make fun of it that's another weird thing it's like how do you validate your feelings and feel your feelings when you feel them and lean into the discomfort something else i've been trying to do and also make your little jokey jokes because that's just that's who i am at this point and i don't want to seem like i'm like diminishing the grief or anything but really truly death is part of life and he was so old and he was so good until he wasn't and it was just time and it's almost a relief because I didn't have to go through and I didn't have to watch him go through half of the shit that I watched my last old animals that I had to put down go through. So it's like, I can't be that sad. I'm sad because he's gone and I love him and I miss him. But I'm also like so grateful that the experience was so good especially compared to what I have to compare it to. Does that make sense? I hope it does. But yeah, this is just, this is what I'm talking about. I don't know. How does this tie into the channel at large? Couldn't tell you, but I'll find a way. I'm fully confident in that. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta sleep and I keep running up the memory on my phone. I have no idea how this video is gonna turn out. I don't know. Here, look. This is closer to what it usually looks like. Looks like more voluminous. But yeah, no, see, because you can't even. I have to hold it back for you to see my face because all I have is this really crappy light. So that was the right call, I think. That was the move. That was the look. Am I going to have to blur out my titties? Because I'm not wearing a bra? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to bed. Good night. <laughs>